Hey guys, Dalen here, and welcome to the fifth day of my Slayer Progress videos. Um, I feel like I say this all the time, like almost every single video, but once again, I wasn't on earlier today like I hoped and thought I would, and so I haven't gotten as far as I would like to yet. Um, I'll probably be up a little bit later tonight and doing um, Slayer, so I'm aiming to get under 11 mil, or I mean, not under, um, to get to the 11 mil mark tonight. It's probably fairly easy to do. Um... I only have about four, 35k XP until there, so that shouldn't be too bad. That's probably about, um, you know, that's about two, two or three tasks, depending on what tasks they are. Um, so, that should be fairly easy. Uh, yeah, but like I said, I wasn't on earlier today. I um, thought I was going to be, and then my dad told me that I needed to drive him to the eye doctor. Um, my dad's on pain meds right now, so he can't drive. So I'm the one obviously driving him around. Um, so you know, whatever. And so I came home. I got online for a while. I did like two tasks. I did a Grotworms task and I think I did a a Griffal a task. Um I got invited to my clan as well today. I did get accepted into the girls clan. Uh I mean I haven't been in it for I haven't even been in it for twelve hours yet. I mean I don't really know anybody, so um we'll see how it goes for me. I'm hoping that it'll go well. I've heard from some other clans they some pe sometimes that people get all, all, uh frustrated and annoyed here i don't think i personally will um they seem like at least the leader that i talked to today seems like she's pretty chill pretty cool so you know hopefully and also because like i know um probably another one of the reasons that probably people do a lot of quitting is because they don't because this clan doesn't have a citadel they don't do a lot of like they don't do like scheduled events or anything and i mean i'm fine with that like, my, my, the way that I, the reason I'm in clans, I'm fine with that. I'm entirely cool with that. Um, I'm really only in it to do talking with people, and I'm used to not doing a lot of chatting in, late at night, um, because, um, it's just, for as long, for as long as I can remember, really, um, people usually are on late at night when I am, because, uh, since I'm in the Pacific time zone, that's one of the later time zones, GMT minus eight, um, and so, obviously, when I'm online, it's like, people in other people in the u.s typically are asleep you know it's you know it's, uh 11 12 1 in the morning um for them when i'm usually on and then people in like the uk and europe usually are you know at school or work that's fine you know um and then usually the only people that are on are people who live in the australian time zones or uh new zealand and so you know that's usually actually who i talk to the most people in new zealand um and Australia one of my best friends on RuneScape now is I think I really I don't want to say say it because if I say it wrong they'll get offended because if you call an Australian a New Zealander or a New Zealander an Australian they'll get mad at you I want to say he's Australian but I don't want to say it for sure because I don't really know and that's really sad that I don't but it's like I know he lives over there and I haven't really like bothered to remember as bad as that sounds anyways um uh, moving on, uh, let's see, yeah, so clan got invited today, hopefully it'll work out, you know, I'm not really typically one to quit clans unless they fall apart or I can sense that they're about to, um, that's usually when I will quit, um, and so yeah, it's like, I, I have, it's not necessarily really a loyalty to clans, but I feel like I should give them the benefit of the doubt and the chance, it's like if they, um, if I join them, if I feel like it, that's something that I, that I like and it turns out that, you know, it's not exactly for me, I'll usually kind of stick around. Usually I, I can find at least one or two friends in a clan, whatever clan I'm in, so I usually stick around for them, you know, just to do the talking, you know. Um, I have I have enough friends on RuneScape, even though I don't have that many, you know, to PM, you know, talk to, so. Uh, usually I'll, I won't, I typically don't quit clans unless I, um... You know, unless they kind of fall apart first, or I, I can tell that they're about to. Um, or if they're in an, act, in a, an inactive clan, I quit Forest of Dreams because it was an inactive clan. There was, like, literally only, like, two or three people active, and, you know, that's not ideal. But they're still alive, you know, that's good, that's cool. Um, so, yeah, uh, Supreme Justice technically is still alive, even though it's really left without anyone with a leadership position. I kind of... 
regret leaving it because I was an admin. I do think that there are some people there that are staying that do want to revive the clan. I told one of the members there that they're always welcome to PM me or hit me up or whatever, like on YouTube, get a hold of me somehow, and I will try and help them out, you know. there. It's like, I've been in a clan. I've been in that clan. I do have connections with those people. I feel like even though I did leave, I'm still, you know, an ex-member of that clan, and I will do what I can to help them if they need it, you know. Um... So, I get, it's like, usually when I, when I, also when I quit clans that I've been in and they're still alive, I do feel somewhat of a loyalty to them because they were my home for quite a while, usually, uh, Supreme Justice was my home for about two months, so, it's not as much as some of my other clans, I was in the Elite Legends for, god, probably half a year to a year, I was in Forest of Dreams for about half a year, you know, I kind of feel, you know, a, uh, that I they I could I should do what I can to help out even though I'm not in their clan anymore because I do have you know connections I have friends in that clan so you know whatever um I mean I know I'm different in that respect to a lot of than a lot of people because I do know a lot of people don't feel that but you know I do um it's part of my personality so but anyways um enough of that uh I'm still trying to decide what 99 I want to get next if you guys have any kind of suggestions on what I should get next, you know, definitely put it in the comments or PM me or something, uh, because I really honestly don't know what I want to get. I'm leaning, like I said, towards hunter, uh, fishing or thieving, uh, definitely, um, fishing and thieving. I haven't decided technically really about hunter yet, um, it's fast, you know, I don't really like Jadinkos, I don't really like hunter, but considering it's, uh, fairly quick and I'm, you know, not super super close but i'm not really far either far off of it so i mean i could get that in probably about a month probably less than that if i know if i got into the no if i managed to get into the no lifing uh mindset like i am with slayer right now definitely so i don't know i you know haven't decided yet you know i mean i do want to get fishing because uh it's AFK because I do rock tails. I mean, rock tails are not the best XP. If you guys are going to be going for fishing and getting going for the best XP, definitely don't do rock tails if you want if you don't really care about cash. Because uh cash wise, it's they're really really good, obviously. That's why everyone does them. But money wise, but uh, XP wise, they're really not great. People think that they are because it has they have the highest gain, but you fish them extremely slow. Um, so definitely if you're going for XP, either do C2 fishing and dungeoneering or barbarian fishing. Those are the fastest XP per hour. Definitely do those. And also do your fish flingers, um, twice per day. Um, more if you can get the tickets for it, obviously. Uh, you can, I think, find up to five tickets a day when you're doing fishing. So I think it's five. I don't remember. Um, but definitely do your fish flingers per day. Uh, especially if you want to get the fishing outfit, um... It does, it does grant a fairly good amount of bonus XP, considering, um, so, I definitely think it's probably, it really is worth getting, you know, uh, especially if you're going to be doing something like Rock Tails, because it, when you're doing Rock Tails and it's extremely slow, any little bit of, uh, XP does help, for sure. Um, if you guys don't know how to do Fish Slingers, there are many guides on YouTube how to do it. I'm considering making one of my own, because I am fairly experience with fish flingers it's like no i don't do it a lot but i do have the full um the full set and um as soon as i go back and get some more tickets i am going to be getting the tackle box as well um because it is really helpful because it holds raw fish so it's nice when you're going to be banking fish like at rocktail so i'm going to probably hopefully get that and getting the like the champions i think the champions tackle box is a trimmed comp requirement too um, not that everyone's going for a trim to comp, obviously, but if you are, or even think that you may in the future, it would be nice to probably get it out of the way. But yeah, um, Fish Flingers is easily a good, f um, once you get one, once you get experienced at it and good at it, it's easily a good 40k a day, um, in, like, 40 minutes, so, you know, that's pretty good. Um, within an hour, 40k an hour, I mean, that's not amazing, but considering Fish Flingers is more of a D&D and a mini game. It's more enjoyable than just sitting there and watching your character fish. Um so I definitely would recommend it. Uh is re like it is kind of hard to get used to it, you know? Um it's not a it's not a single player. You it's not like you can do it on your own. You really can't. You have to go into the French chat and the official world for it. But once once you figure it out, it's really pretty simple to do. So
I mean, I learned how to do it within the day. And the same day that I started, I started um, comping, compiling for them. So, um, which I uh, you'd understand if you know what if you know what fish flingers is. You know what I'm talking about about compiling. First, the first day that I started doing fish flingers, I was compiling for them. So it's really not too hard to learn. You know, but so whatever. Uh, so definitely do that. Um, let's see. Actually, I had a really long ass dark beast task today. I, it was like 232. That's like, like I was happy to do it because it was a 72k task that I did in less than an hour. Um, I mean, that's not amazing, honestly, because you can, when you're getting like metal dragons and whatnot with abilities with mage tasks, you can easily get like 100 to 150k an hour. But considering it was a ranged task, you know, I was I was happy with it. Um, Got my first dark beat, dark bow drop. I think I said that already. Um, let's see. I'm actually really happy to do to do those kinds of tasks, like anadermic beasts. I like doing those and like whatever because of the unlimited prayer. Because you don't have to bring um food and you don't have to bring uh prayer pots because you, if you have a dragon tooth necklace, which I don't have on right now, um because these don't drop bones, um. But if you have the split dragon tooth necklace, or there's another one, I forgot what it was called, but uh, the split dragon tooth necklace is the lower tiered one. It only uses normal bones and big bones, but with the other one, you can use higher tiers like dragon bones and whatnot. Um, I didn't personally really want to get it because I couldn't really be bothered to use tokens for it because the normal bones and uh, uh, big bones are really what I use them on for Slayer. Honestly, like, I could use it for dragons, but, you know, I just, I couldn't be bothered. And also get a bone crusher, so it, you don't have to go up and bury every individual bone, because it works. So, like, if you have a combination of a bone crusher and a split dragon tooth necklace, or whatever the other one is, um, you basically get unlimited prayer at a slayer task, so you don't have to bring any prayer pots. So, it's really nice. It's really cool. Um, so, if you are, if you guys are doing slayer, especially if you have Kuridal as a master, I'm pretty sure you could use it on, um other masters for sure but at least in my experience is Curdo. um she gives enough tasks that it would be worth getting you know so you save up on prayer potions and food um also remember i totally would recommend doing got uh, not while gothic sleeps the world wakes as soon as possible because of uh gothic's blessing ability that's a really handy ability um it's basically like uh rejuvenate or whatever it is right rejuvenate Except you don't need a shield, and I think it heals you a little bit more. I can't, I don't remember. So this heals you 8% of your maximum every 2 seconds. I mean, I, and then the other one let's see, it helps you 40% of your life points. So, let's see, 48 eight times 8% of your life points over 10 seconds. So yeah, it's, um, I think, I'm pretty sure Guthix's blessing is better. If I can do, if I can do my math correctly and I'm understanding um, what they're talking about. Um, but yeah, I think, I do believe Guthix's Blessing is better. It's really nice, it's really handy if you are going to be using abilities. If not, you know, um, that's another story. But if you're going to be using abilities, I definitely recommend trying to get that because it is a really handy ability, especially when you're doing something like Slayer, um, because it does save on food and prayer because of its healing abilities. I mean, it's not that even that hard to get up to, um, 100% ad uh, adrenaline, so, you know, definitely worth using. It's a cooldown of 300 seconds, which is, like, the, the the bum part but you know with an op uh, with an ability like that it would be really op if it had a short cooldown so anyways oh let's see but like i said you guys should give me you know suggestions on what i should get for what 99 i should get um it's definitely not gonna be construction definitely not don't suggest that because i won't do it <laughs> uh construction to me until they do the revamp of it which i think they are hopefully planning um, construction is really a pointless 99 unless you like the cape or you're going for max cape. Honestly, there's no other reason really why you should have it because it is such a, like, pointless. Like, I, the only thing I use my house for is, uh, my portals, my gilded altar, uh, my glory, and my obelisk. And I can make that all at 82. I think you could all make all of that crap at 80. Um, or even lower if you boost. But, um, and there's really nothing at higher levels that I really need to get. Like, there's no reason I need to get higher. This is the one of the reasons why my construction has stayed that low. I mean, obviously I'm going for max case, so obviously I'm going to have to get it, but I'm really hoping they do a revamp to make construction more useful because, honestly, it's really not that useful right now. 
at higher levels, really, it's not worth it, um, at least to me, it's not, I mean, to some of you guys, I guess it might, but to me, it's definitely not worth getting 99, unless you like the cape or maxing, for sure, um, I do need to get 96 summoning, yes, need to get that, I, for Pakyak, uh, I keep saying that, but I'm, I'm not gonna be getting enough, um, charms from 99 slayer for sure to get to get it mostly because i don't pick up golds and greens and crims i pick up crims actually i don't pick up golds and greens because i can't be bothered they, they drop too frequently and i don't want to go run over every time and go pick them up um so but yeah um you know i'll be probably just doing a bunch of glaciers i actually just bought rage fires they're only like six mil so i was like okay those are freaking cheap i will buy them um, I thought they were more expensive, but obviously after RuneScape 3, all the high-end armor crashes, and I, there's actually a bunch of different reasons economically for that. I mean, RuneScape does have a very odd economy, um, because obviously material costs more than the final product, which is not true in real life. Um, but the reason for that basically is the experience that you gain from making that, um, final product is more valuable in runescape than in real life so you know that's kind of why it's all messed up that way i mean whatever but uh no uh one of the reasons i'm fairly sure why runescape's economy crashes every time or the high end of high, for higher end equipment like neck sets and uh all that all that jazz like uh rage uh, gla uh glace or boots and all that um the reason they crash is one because there's always just a constant influx of them coming into the game and not a lot going out there's really no there's really nobody who kind of like dies with it and doesn't retrieve it or whatnot or it or it disappears there's really no people who do that uh, i'm pretty sure there may be people who do but there's really no money sinks like that when you invest in like armor so um, and then also the fact that uh, people panic sell because they see it crashing, and so that devalues armor further. And then also because uh, when updates come, people quit. You know that's just the way it is. Uh, so and they they sell all their stuff. And a lot of people who quit do are higher end level players because they do want to. Um, a lot of them go to O Seven Scape. Um, because of the nostalgia factor, and you know they they like that era better, and you know more more power to them. But uh, when they pay, when they sell their stuff, when they quit um, after every update, you know, you know people, you know, the value goes down. I've lost a fair amount on Pernix already. I mean, I don't really care just because I'm planning on keeping it. One because like it's good armor, and I do a fair amount of ranging. Um, also because I like the look of it, and that's another big reason why I'm keeping it because I like the looks. So. I'm keeping it really for the for looks too as well. Um, I probably would have been uh, fine with Armadale if I hadn't liked the look of Pernix, honestly. But you know I do, so that's a personal thing. I'm one of those people who likes making my character look good, um, and I think Pernix does. Uh, some people don't, but whatever. Anyways, um, so yeah, uh, put your 99 suggestions in the in the comments or PM me about it because I really honestly don't know what I want to get. Uh, a lot of the useful 99s I have, like the combat ones, uh, I'll have Slayer, not that that's exactly useful after 99, um, but yeah, anyways, um, I think that's all for tonight, guys, uh, you know, I, I'm 2k away from 11 mil, so I think actually I might do that on camera and then I'll get off, but Anyways, uh, yeah, that's really what it is. Like I said, I'm planning 99 probably next Tuesday or Wednesday, probably more Wednesday, possibly Thursday. I'm not sure about Thursday. Most likely it could be Thursday, but it'll be later in the afternoon because I have, uh, orientation for college in the morning. It's gonna probably last a couple hours, which, whatever, it's fine. Um, yeah, I need, to, I'm signing up for class and stuff. I haven't done my online orientation. I keep forgetting, so I need to do that for sure. Um, anyways. This is the last one before I get 11 mil XP. I think I may do some more tasks tonight. Uh, go, go. Okay, there you go. Got 11 mil tonight. Um, 11 mil XP, guys. Uh, that's a fairly large milestone. I'm only 2.034 mil from, so basically 2 mil from 99. So I'm really looking forward to that for sure. Anyways, guys. Um. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you later. Thanks. Bye.